morning, everyone. It's, it's fantastic that you're here with us this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us online as well. And for all of you, you have got the right week. It's not Mother's Day. I know it feels a bit like deja vu, but it's not Mother's Day today. It was last week, and we had a lovely Mother's Day. And, you know, a whole week has gone. I can't believe it. But we're here again together. I'd like to start by just reading to you from um, Psalm 100. It says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Fantastic. Now, will you stand and we're going to sing, and I need you guys to clap along for this first one because we need a little bit of a beat, I think. (laughs)
we just turn to the person next to us, next to us and give them a wink or a high five or something and just say hi. It's great to have you here. And to you, high five. <laughs> okay. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, it's so wonderful to be here in your presence again. We thank you that you are our Father and we are your children. We thank you for the promises that you give us in your word, that you are a way maker and a promise keeper. You do give us light in the darkness and we thank you so much for that. Father, we just pray that our worship to you this day will be a sweet fragrance, that you will be honoured and glorified in all that we do. We pray that your Holy Spirit will move here in our hearts. Open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to see all that you have for us. We pray that you will be honoured. We thank you so much for all you do and for all you are. In Jesus' name, amen. You are here, looming in our midst. I worship you. She
Today we're going to gather around the communion table and you're most welcome to partake in this with us. If you love the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, you're most welcome to join us in communion. I was just reflecting uh, the way maker and uh, what amazing lyrics in that uh, song and just thought yesterday, my wife Chrissy and I watched a, a program on the TV, Selling Houses Australia. It's, it's not, I, look, I watch it uh, just for the curiosity of just how the thing turns out. And, but this particular house that we saw was only partially completed. Now, there's a whole lot of circumstances why. And it just looked like a, a house that needed finishing, you know. And uh, as I thought about that, illustration, just that picture of the house, I, I thought of us today as people. And I praise our amazing God because before Jesus, you know, the Bible says that the wages of sin was death. And thank God we have a Savior. Thank God we have a Heavenly Father who had a plan. And He wasn't going to leave us in a half-finished state. And one of my favourite verses about this time in communion and particularly about Jesus says in Colossians 1.22, and this amazing verse, it says, for he has now reconciled you through Christ to present you as holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. And Jesus' work on the cross finished God's plan. And there's so much to unpack in that Colossians verse. There truly, truly is. But we are without blemish. When we stand before God, one day we will, God doesn't see all the bad bits and the, the sin and everything else because in that verse it says we can stand before God because we're made righteous. Now, the righteousness has nothing to do with us. In fact, the Bible says that our own righteousness is like filthy rags. But in that verse, it tells us that when God sees us, he sees us in a righteous state. Why? It's because of the work that Jesus did on the cross and the shedding of his blood. And as believers, as born-again believers, we are covered by his blood. And we're made righteous. Praise God. And we don't serve a partial God. We don't have a partial resurrection. And we don't have a partial being born again. And praise God, we don't have a partial forgiveness of sins. Some faiths you have to work and do works to somehow atone for that sin. In fact, Colossians 2.13 says, He forgave us all our sins. Today, church, as we take communion and as the music plays, in your own time, in your own reflective thoughts, let's give thanks to God. Thanks to God for what he has done. And thank God for what he's going to do in your life. Boy, we have an amazing Savior, don't we? We truly, truly do. God bless you. Above all powers, above all.
Welcome to church today on the 15th of May. It is great to have you joining us either in person in the auditorium and how good is it to worship together and to praise our incredible God together. And of course, welcome if you're joining us online and if you're joining us at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. We just love being able to gather together, to worship together, to chat together, to get to know each other. And of course, welcome new people as well. Kids at Marion Term 2 program is up and running. So parents, make sure you bring your kids into the pavilion. We start at 10. Please make sure they electronically are signed in and then your leaders will meet you in the pavilion and our jam leaders will stay in the pavilion and our jump and lighthouse kids will go to the lighthouse room. It's such an exciting term. You don't want to miss out on the amazing things that our kids are learning in Kids at Marion. And Element Youth is back on Friday nights. So any details, please contact Pastor Stephen and make sure you get a copy of the Term 2 program. Young adults are back, so make sure that you contact Pastor Stephen to find out any details about life groups and gathering opportunities. And of course, keep in mind that the June long weekend is SYG, and that's basically 13 year olds through to 30 year olds. So make sure you sign up and register for SYG, but make sure that you register for our quiz night where all the funds will go to SYG. And that is on Friday, the 27th of May. For any details, please contact Pastor Stephen. Marion Life Month is coming up in June. So make sure you keep an eye on what's going on at Marion Life and what's happening so you know how you can contribute to Marion Life Month in June. Good Gear is open during the week, so make sure you come and see Corinne and her amazing team of volunteers and pick up a special autumn bargain at Good Gear. And of course, Mops is back and Mops Next is back. And for any details, please contact the office or the Mops team. And tea and coffee are back. So on Sundays after the 10 a.m. service, join us for tea and coffee on the hard floor. Enjoy staying around and catching up with people, perhaps meeting with people people or also introducing yourself to people you haven't met before and then of course come back at 5 30 for barista made coffee by our amazing barista team and come and join us in the pavilion before the 6 p.m service we'd love to see you there you are all invited 2022 is our year of breakthrough and so make sure that you are writing down the things that you are praying for for breakthrough through this year and you are committing them to prayer each day. It is great as a church community to be able to do this as well as individuals. Sidegate Cafe is open on Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays for amazing meals, coffee and cake. Come and meet a friend in the cafe and come and say hi to our incredible volunteers and Alicia, our cafe manager. Craft is also back on Wednesday mornings, so for any details, please contact the office to find out what you need to know and what you need to bring. Our next prayer night is on Wednesday, May the 18th at 7.30 p.m. You can join us in the auditorium in person or you can join us on Zoom. Make sure you contact the office for the link. This is an opportunity for us as a church family to gather together and to pray together for one hour. So please make sure you make a note of that in your diary. And if you can't join us in May, it's the third Wednesday of every month. Let's make prayer a priority in our church community. We have so many opportunities here at Marion Church of Christ to be part of pastoral care. So make sure if you know of someone who's not traveling well, who needs some encouragement, or needs to be blessed by flower power and a delivery of flowers, please let the office know, let your pastoral carers know, and think of what you can do in this situation. You might be able to drop off a card, you might be able to drop off a care package, and it is great to be part of a caring and loving church family. For any details about giving, please make sure you check the website, the app. There are offering envelopes available. You can do FPOS after the service or you can contact our staff for any details. For any other details that you want to check out or things that you might have missed, please make sure that you look at the Friendly Word, our website, make sure you like our socials and share them, of course, our app, or call the office and speak to one of our friendly office staff.
Riley Bertram is going to be bringing us a message today and we're continuing our series on believing for your breakthrough and we are looking at the pardon principle. So make sure you've got your Bibles, get your phone, take some notes and hear what God is saying to you today. Thanks for joining us today in church. It's great to have you either at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. in the auditorium in person worshipping together or online at 10 a.m. We just pray that you have a blessed week this week and that you have an opportunity to share Jesus with people during the week. Let's be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. Have a great week and we'll see you next week in church. Good morning or good evening, church, depending on when you're watching this. Um, it's my privilege to bring our message this morning or this evening. Um, I'm going to try and use the word today from this point forward. Um, normally, um, I would remark at how great it is uh, to be in God's house and be worshipping with you all. Uh, unfortunately, that's not possible this week. As you can probably tell from the sound of my voice, um, I have come down with a case of the evil covid uh, but never fear, um, I shall return just as soon as I figure out how to inject this uh, this hand sanitizer. Um, I'll be good to go. Um, no, in all seriousness, please don't don't do that. Um, but I will, I'm sure, make a full recovery, and I look forward to to being back in in church with you all. I apologise in advance for my lack of voice. Um, hopefully, if you're in the church, they've got the this volume turned all the way up. If you're watching at home, uh, feel free to turn the volume up so your neighbours can hear me as well. Uh, before I dive into my message, uh, would you join me in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we live in a world where, despite illness or, or injury, we can still meet together um, and I can still, I still have the ability to bring your word um, using the wonderful technology that you provided. Um, we ask that everything we do this morning would lift you up and praise you, um, and we ask that as we listen to, to your word and, and what it is you've asked me to share, we ask that you would just lay that on our hearts so that we can hear the, the message that you have for us this morning. Uh, we pray these things in and all things in your name, Father. Amen. Excuse me. So today, uh, we're going to be continuing our series on Believing for your breakthrough. And I'm going to be talking about the, the pardon principle. Uh, I want to start by telling you that the, the pardon principle could really be referred to as the, the forgiveness principle, um, except that that doesn't start with P. Uh, but we're going to be talking about forgiveness today uh, and the important role it plays in believing for our breakthrough. Now this is, if you've heard me speak before, this is usually the part of my message where I ask a question and call for a show of hands, but obviously I can't do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that at some point, uh, all of us at one point or another in our lives have had to forgive someone for something that they did. Um, and I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet that at some point, um, we've had to ask someone for forgiveness, um, either from someone we know or, or from God or from both. Um, uh, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet that each of us has been in both of those situations at, at one point or another. Forgiveness is, is such a vital part of being a Christian, it, so much so that it features in, in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, many of us are familiar with the, the Lord's Prayer, but for anyone who isn't, um, you can find it in Matthew 6, verses 9 to 12. Uh, I'm going to read it in, the, in a moment. Uh, I've got a few verses this morning I should point out. Um, for each of them, I'm reading for the, from the NIV version, if you feel like reading along. Um, but for the, the Lord's Prayer, um, Jesus is telling his disciples basically how they should pray. Um, and he says this, and, and feel free to, to say it along with me if, if, you've, if unlike me, you've learned it by heart. Um, but it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now verse 12 um, is the key verse when we're talking about forgiveness. and It's where Jesus says, uh, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now some serve, some versions say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. Others use the word trespass, but essentially it's it's referring to, to forgiving people that have in, in one way or another wronged us uh, in some way. Uh, and the point I want to draw from verse 12 um, which is one which I have always struggled with and I, I continue to struggle with um, every single day. And, and when you read the verse, you'll notice it doesn't say we should forgive those who ask for it. It doesn't say we should forgive those who deserve it um, who or who've tried to make amends. It just says forgive. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but I, I struggle with the idea of forgiving someone who doesn't believe they've done anything wrong, uh, who, who doesn't believe that they need you know, my forgiveness. For me to forgive someone, um, I want to hear them own up to what they've done, take responsibility, acknowledge what they did was wrong, and, and ask for my forgiveness. And then I'll think about it. But that's not what we as, as Christians are called upon to do. Um, we're called upon to forgive all those who sin against us. And, and I believe there are two reasons, two main reasons why. Um, the first is because regardless of whether they ask for forgiveness or not, the act of forgiving someone um, allows us to start healing and to start putting whatever pain and suffering we might be experiencing behind us. I want to tell you a story to, to demonstrate what I mean, which is someone pointed out to me that's sort of my signature move when it comes to trying to explain a point. Um, but about 10 years ago, my, uh, my aunt got rather upset about a joke that my dad decided to, that, that my dad told about their dad, my grandfather. Um, now, I should make two points very clear before I go any further. First of all, that the aunt that I'm referring to is not Sonia. Uh, so don't ask her for more details. And secondly, I did get permission to tell this story. Um, but anyway, so, so my aunt got upset about a, a joke that my dad made about my granddad um, and decided that, that she would just stop talking to him. Um, the, the trouble is she didn't tell anybody that that was the case until six months later um, she called him up and said, so you've probably realized by now that I haven't been speaking to you. To which my dad replied, uh, no, actually I didn't realize I'd done anything to offend you and I didn't realize you'd stop talking to me. Um, now, as humorous as that might sound, it, it highlights how blind we can become when we feel like we're in the right and the other person should be the one to come crawling back on their hands and knees and ask for forgiveness. Um, now, I can't speak for my aunt, but I'm pretty sure in that six months she was waiting for an apology that never came um, and she would have been frustrated and, and angry and, and hurt. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that that pain and anger she felt couldn't be let go of because she refused to forgive someone who didn't recognize that they'd done anything wrong. Now, when I, I think about that story, I, I still laugh, but then I'm reminded of just how powerful forgiveness is and why Jesus tells us to forgive people regardless of whether they deserve it or not. Um, the, the second reason why Jesus tells us to forgive without hesitation is because the effect that it that not doing so can have on our soul and on our spirit. Um, I want to read from Mark eleven, twenty-five to 26, again, the NIV version. And it says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now that pretty much sums up why forgiving people, regardless of whether they deserve it um, or whether they ask for it, is so important. If you can't forgive the people in your lives, um, then when we come to God seeking our own forgiveness, there's there's always going to be something standing in the way or standing in between us um, and receiving God's forgiveness. Uh, in Matthew 5, verses, verse 7, it says, You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your own eye, and then, we will see, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. If we can't forgive those who hurt us, um, then we can't expect God to forgive us unconditionally. Another great example is, yeah, you can find in the, the parable of the unforgiving servant. You can find that in Matthew 18, 
21 to 35. But basically there's a, a king who is owed quite a large sum of money by one of his servants. And instead of throwing the man in jail until he can pay or increasing the interest or extending the, the length of the loan, he just wipes the blank. He just wipes it clear. He forgives the debt in its entirety. Um, then later that day, that same certain that same servant seeks out another man who owes him money, um, a much smaller amount. And when that that second man can't pay, he has him thrown in jail um, until he can repay the debt. And when the king hears about this, he has that first servant brought back to him and says, "I forgave such a large sum for you. How could you not show that same forgiveness to this other man?" Um, and the king was outraged, and he has the servant thrown in jail to be tortured until he can repay the debt. Now, you might be sitting there and thinking, well, this is all well and good in principle, but some things are just unforgivable. Some people have just gone too far, and I just don't have any interest in forgiving that person or having them back in my life. Or you might be sitting there thinking, well, that's that's all well and good, but some acts demand justice before forgiveness is even an option. I want to tell you a story about a woman who truly understood the power of forgiveness. Um... A few weeks ago, I think, I think it was Sonia told a story about a, a Holocaust victim by the name of Cory Ten Boom, who forgave one of the concentration camp guards um, when she was confronted with him a few years later. And that story reminded me of, of one I heard about a, a different Holocaust victim. Um, and I heard about it in a documentary a few years ago. Her name was Ava Kaur. Now, Ava was 10 when she was transported to Auschwitz, and within 30 minutes of arriving, her entire family, except for her sister, had been taken to the gas chambers and murdered. Ava and her sister weren't killed um, instantly because they were twins. Instead, they were transported to a particularly evil part of the camp where they were brutally experimented on by a man called Joseph Mengele, who you may have heard of. Um, Ava described later in life, she feared all of the Nazis, but none as much as Mengele. When the Soviet army liberated the camp in 1945, Ava and her sister were barely alive, but through an act of God, she was one of the few who survived the ordeal. But unfortunately, in all that chaos, Mengele, the doctor who had caused so much pain, so much suffering, escaped and fled to South America. Ava wrote um, later in life that, that him escaping from justice had made forgiveness in her eyes simply impossible. Um, and as a result, she was forced to, to live her life carrying such a heavy burden, unimaginable pain um, for decades to come. She wrote that when she found out Mengele had died of old age in South America, having lived a full life, it que- she began to question the nature of her faith uh, entirely. A long time later in 2014, a man by the name of Oscar Groening, who's commonly known as the accountant of Auschwitz, was actually put on trial at the age of 93 for the part that he played in the the horrors that took place at the camp. Being one of the last remaining survivors, uh, Ava was called upon to testify at the trial uh, with a handful of others. And she sat down and and listened to the man recount the events that took place. She listened to him describe his involvement. She listened to his lawyers attempt to shield him from the responsibility for those atrocities that took place. On one of the last days of the trial, Ava approached Oscar. Um, beg my pardon. On one of the last days of the trial, uh, Ava approached Oscar when they were having a break. She sat down to talk to him, um, and she described what had been done to her, the the suffering she'd endured. Um, and then, before Oscar could even begin to apologise, she reached out, held his hand, and said, "I forgive you." After all that she had gone through, all that she had carried with her for decades. She forgave him and she forgave all those who sinned against her, not because they asked for forgiveness, not because they deserved it in the eyes of the law, not because they deserved it in the eyes of the general public, but because forgiving them was the the key to unburdening herself and removing that barrier between herself and God. Shortly after sitting down with Oscar, uh, the media learnt what was discussed between them and There was outrage among some of the other survivors and their families. How dare she forgive him for what he'd done? Um, There were people calling her actions just disgraceful. And Ava simply said, I cannot forgive someone on behalf of all those who suffered at the hands of the Nazis. 
but I can forgive him for the pain I suffered. I can forgive him for how I'm I can forgive him because like him I'm not perfect. And how can I ask God to forgive my sins if I refuse to forgive him? I can forgive him because doing so finally has allowed me to put decades worth of pain behind me. Put all that suffering that she's been carrying, she was able to start putting that behind her. Forgiving him was a, a breakthrough moment for Ava. Ava lived another five years before passing away in 2019. And in one of the final interviews she gave as one of the last surviving victims, um, she was asked if she had any regrets. She said she regretted not trying to forgive her captor sooner. She regretted forcing herself to carry that burden and that pain for so long. Now, Ava's story demonstrates to us, or demonstrates to all of us, just how powerful and important forgiveness can be. I know that forgiving someone, uh, forgiving people in our lives, sometimes seems impossible. But I think if if Ava can forgive the Nazis that murdered her family, experimented on her, and then escaped justice. If she can forgive those people, I think we can forgive the people in our lives. And the Bible tells us that only when we forgive the people in our lives can we truly come to God and ask for our own forgiveness with nothing standing between us and Him. I don't know if forgiving someone in your life will be a breakthrough moment for you uh, in your journey like it was for Ava, but I know that it's possible and I know that God calls us to do it. And for me, that's a good enough reason to, to at least try. Not to mention that forgiving people in our lives is, is something we need to do in order for our own souls to start healing. I'm going to close my message here in a moment before I lose what's left of my voice. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to pray. Um, and I want to encourage you today to think about if there's a, a grudge that you've been holding, whether it's been whether you've been holding on to it for a short amount of time or maybe you've been holding on to it for years. Um, think about if there's something standing in the way of you healing. If if you've been carrying a burden, refusing to forgive someone because they just haven't acknowledged what they did wrong, I want to encourage you this morning to to think about forgiving that person, to think about putting that pain and suffering behind you, taking that step forward um, in faith and, and taking that step towards breakthrough, putting that behind us so that we can come to God with nothing in between us and Him, focus on asking Him for forgiveness for, for the things in our lives that we haven't got right. I encourage you this morning that if that's if you're in that position or, or if you feel like there's someone in your life that you just can't forgive, I encourage you to talk with someone today. I encourage you to pray with someone today. Pray with the person you came with. Pray with Bill, who's probably around somewhere, I hope. Um, pray with somebody in the church or even just pray by yourself. But sit there and, and start that journey towards letting go of whatever it is you've been holding on to. Forgiving the people in your lives that, that you've been holding a grudge against or, or refusing to forgive because they don't, it doesn't seem like they want it or they deserve it. Put that aside. Focus on tearing down the, the barriers between you and God so that you can come to Him with nothing in between the two of you and that you can ask for forgiveness for the things in your life without worrying about letting others tear you down or, or hold you back um, so on that note will you join me in prayer Heavenly Father we thank you that, that you are a God who forgives but more importantly or as importantly you are a God that gave us the ability to forgive those in our lives um, you call us to forgive not because not because people necessarily deserve forgiveness or, or, with, or not necessarily because they ask for forgiveness Lord you call us to forgive people because you forgave us of so much. You've blessed us with so many things. And when we forgive others in our lives, it tears down that barrier between us and you. We ask that as, as we start to, to try and forgive those in our lives, that you would walk that journey with us, that you would help us to forgive those or to let go of the grudge or the pain that we've been holding on to and, and to just simply come to you, Father, completely unburdened, having let go of whatever it is that we're holding on to. We pray these and all things in your name. Amen. We're going to close our service now with, with one last song. Um, so I, enjoy, I invite you to join us uh, and stand as we worship and praise uh, our amazing God. Thanks, guys.
Yes, thank you so much. Uh, that was lovely to hear from Riley. And we have a number that can't be here um, because of COVID. So, um, yeah, our prayers and thoughts are with you. And um, we are going to finish with our final song, uh, Fresh Friend. And I pray that you realise not only that God is with you, but the Holy Spirit is in you. And I pray that what we sing today will be a prayer for you as we go out into the week. So let's stand and sing.
told, God loves you. But what does that really mean? That some impersonal force, galaxies away, may consider you from time to time? Or that you are a single drop in a vast ocean of humanity and God cares for all of it? There are billions of lives, billions of stories. Can we really believe he has great destinies planned for all of them? Surely the ruler of the universe has more important affairs than to notice the needs of one singular individual. But hear this, nothing could be further from the truth. When God says, I love you, it means that he crafted every detail of your being. Your every feature is his perfect design. His mind perceives your worries and your thoughts. His heart is broken by your pain. You are his child, created in his image. Your value exceeds all the riches of earth. Your worth extends beyond the stars. And though you may be unaware, he's carefully constructing the events of your life to build his kingdom. If you are willing, he can and will achieve wonders through your hands. It is the deepest passion, the most meaningful promise. It is your security, your hope, and your future. It is the truth beyond doubt. God loves you.